everybody. We're going to start in just about one minute. Um, if you're here and in the chat, can you please let me know how I sound and if it's okay or if you think I should turn it up or down. Same for the music. If you can't hear it, please let me know and I can turn it up or down. So I'm really excited to show you guys how to do some heat styling for wigs. I realize now I'm probably going to need to move the camera down a hair, so I'm going to do that now so you guys can see better what I'm going to be working on. Um, just a hair. That's probably a little bit better. Okay. No, well, now I'm not really in the frame unless I'm way back here. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna adjust this again. I sent this last night and then I decided just now that I didn't like it. So, sorry for the technical difficulties. But here we are, We Work Wednesdays, woohoo! We're doing some heat styling today. So what that means is styling a wig into a permanent style using heat tools. So that means curling wigs that were straight or straightening wigs that were curly, or maybe even putting like a poof in a wig um, by heat treating the hair to go a certain way. So today what I have for you guys is a wig by Arda Wigs. Um, I forget what the model of this wig is, so if I find that I will put it on the Discord. Um, but this wig is heat resistant like all of the rest of their wigs. And you may have seen this in a prior video of mine, and it was all curly. Um, the wig was, it was a curly wig, so I decided that I didn't like the way that it was curled because all the curls went in one direction. So some of the curls curled towards your face, and some of them curled away, and I didn't like that look and said, I'm gonna redo this. And I also kind of wanted it to just be a straight wig. So I, I straightened her out, in advance and I took some time lapses of those which I can hopefully cut in um, on YouTube for better examples but without further ado we are going to begin straightening this wig in real time and if you at home have a wig that you want to straighten um, go ahead and get your straightener because all you're gonna need is your wig this is item number one number two you're gonna need your trusty wig comb Make sure you have one of these wide tooth combs just to get on any snags. And then you're just gonna need your regular old straightener. You don't need anything fancy to straighten a wig. Um, just a regular old straightener. And I realize now, <laughs> mine got bumped all the way down to the lowest setting, but um, you should have it up towards the top. Any human hair straightener is not going to get hot enough to where it would melt plastic because it's supposed to be safe for you. So if you crank it up all the way, it's still gonna be safe on the wig and it's gonna set it better, faster. Um, before we get started, something I always want to say in my wig panels that I forget is why do we use heat to style wigs? Why can't we just, I don't know, make stuff happen, do a bunch of teasing and it'll, it'll go with the flow. Um, well, wigs are made of synthetic fibers, synthetic wigs are at least, and they're basically plastic. So to shape plastic, you heat it, and then it becomes malleable, you shape it, and then as it cools, it sets into that shape. So you'll notice when we do our walkthrough today that I'll say a lot that the shape that it pulls in is the shape that it's gonna be. So it's really important that after you've done the heating part, you don't just let it go and forget about it. It has to cool in the shape that you want it to be. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and take the net off of this wig. 
I just did this to make sure that honestly the cat didn't eat any of the fibers of the wig. And I also used it to kind of preserve the styling a little bit. And you can see we got this wig, I'm sorry, it's hard to see here, from this curly original shape to this nice straightened way, way, way longer, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful straight hair. Okay, so I, I am gonna tip the camera down again so that you guys can see me working a little bit better. I'm gonna turn my straightener on. And if you guys have a straightener, go ahead and get it. Get your wig all set up and ready, and we'll get started soon, and I will stop dropping things on the ground. So you're gonna see a little bit of ugly here under the, under the backdrop because the backdrop is only so long, unfortunately. Um, I'm gonna sit just so that Wig Chan and I both fit into this frame. Um, and I'm gonna tip my light down a little bit too. It seems like we're just a little, a little washed out, but that's better. Okay, so you want to straighten a wig, you say. Well, one tip to remember is, again, regular old human straightener, highest setting. You don't want to be using any products because you're just going to kind of melt them into the fibers of the wig. Um, and smaller sections are always better. Um, the reason that I say that is because that way you can make sure that the strands are getting tangled as you're going through and doing your uh, straightening. And that way you're making sure that you're not accidentally essentially ironing any kinks into the hair. Um, if I had a really thick section like this, there might be some hair in the middle that's in like a weird wavy shape. And if I were to straighten that, then it would just get stuck into that position. So I wanna make sure that I don't do that. One more thing I wanted to check. Um, I don't think that the chat box is working. Um, so, I'm just gonna check it one more time. Um, Cause if I adjust this, it is changing the shape, but for some reason it's just, it's not showing up on there. At least I'm not seeing it. That's okay. We will just, we'll turn off the chat box today. Sad, it's a sad day. And maybe we'll get the, uh, I don't think the alert box is working today either. So we'll turn off all the chat stuff, and instead we will just scoot this over and scoot me over. And wow, now we're in the middle. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So now I need to turn, tilt my screen down because I'm a little bit at a, uh, I look a little like color inverted on the monitor. And then there's cat toys on the ground, so ignore that. Okay, so back to the work that we're supposed to be doing, dropping more things on the ground. Comb, small section of hair. Um, so you can see here, maybe I have some wispies. So I'm just gonna use the comb to kind of clean up this section, just again, because we don't want to get any of those wispies in our nice straight new piece of hair. So I've pulled that out. The straightener is finally hot. I'm going to get all the way up to the root of the wig as close as I can. And I'm gonna put a decent amount of pressure. And another thing to remember, make sure your wig is really pinned down. And I'm gonna slowly pull away from the wig. Sorry, I'll turn like this, you can probably see a little better. And as I'm going on the front end, I'm just kind of separating the strands a little bit so that they go through the iron in the correct way. Okay, and as I said, this wig is gonna cool in the shape I leave it, so I'm just gonna put my hand here for a second because I don't want it to take the shape of the face of the wig head. <laughs> it would be kind of strange to have a face-shaped piece of hair, but you can see already, that was so fast. Oh my gosh, look at it, it's perfectly straight. How, we just did that like nothing. You don't need any special training to straighten a wig as long as it's heat proof. If you have a wig and you're not sure if it's heat proof, I would do a test strand on the back of the wig near the nape of the neck on an underneath layer so that if you do accidentally fry any fibers, 
um, they're not going to show and it's not going to like ruin your wig. So we have one section down. We need to get this out of the way so that we don't accidentally pick it up again. So what I'm going to do is take one of these extra T-pins that I have and I'm just going to go like this and stick it into the face just to keep these hairs, I'm sorry I'm not showing you guys, just to keep these hairs out of the way I put them on the other side of the T-pin. They're still a little bit warm so hopefully they don't cool with this little kink in them. But anyway, I can still see the chat if you guys chat though so if you have any questions while we're doing this please feel free to ask. Um, and we're going to move on to the next section, of this piece of hair. I don't know why I keep dropping the straightener today. I was fine last night. Um, Alright, so for our next section, I'm going to show you a different way to approach this. Um, if you pull your wig hair back far enough and you're in the front, you can see these lines here where the hair is sewn. Those are the wefts. So using the wefts as a guideline is another good way to get your sectioning down for your straightening or your curling. So what I'm going to do for this next piece is I'm going to just go in between here and pull out the hair that's on this very bottom weft. And I'm just going to do maybe this weft and one more. So I'm going to go up one more little rung here stick my fingers through there and separate one more section of hair out. And if I got any extra, I'm going to make sure to put it up where it was. And this hair, because I don't want to get it confused with what I'm working on, I'm going to twist it up and then I'm going to grab just your regular old little hair clip. I'm just going to clip it and throw it over the top and clip it down so that that doesn't get in our way. Okay, so I'm going to turn this wig head pick up the straightener that I threw onto the ground, also grab my comb, comb through, make sure there's no tangles, and then we're going to begin from the base of the hair with a firm clamp and a very nice slow pull down the strands. You may notice that the color of your wig will change slightly as it heats up. Please don't panic. That's normal. It will go back to its regular color once it has cooled. Um, again, this is essentially glorified plastic strands, so it is going to change color a little bit when it heats up. Alright, so that one's down. There's a little piece of fuzz in here. I think this is like a, a piece of thread from sewing the wefts in or sewing the tag in maybe. I'm just going to pull that out. And we're going to move on to another section. If you're somebody who um, has a hard time deciding like where to start from things like this, um, using the wefts is a really good guideline uh, because they're basically a roadmap just lined out for you. So we're going to unclip this. I'm going to put it in my mouth because why not? I'm going to pick another weft. Separate. I've separated that out and now I'm going to clip this hair up and get it out of the way. Okay, so we have another piece of hair here. This T-pin continues to get in my way, so you'll see me move it numerous times. We're going to get our straightener. Make sure that it's still on. If you are somebody who wants a straightener that auto turns off, make sure you check it. Um, so that you don't accidentally, uh, you know, get halfway through your wig and then realize that it's off and suddenly it's not curl, uh, not straightening anymore. Just remember to check those things. Okay, and it looks like some of the fibers here are a little bit straggly and frizzy, so I'm going to be really careful with this section and hope that those get straighter and not scragglier as we go down the wig. Oh. Thank you, no backdrop. I kind of match. We like blend in today. All right, so again, up near the top, pretty firm clamp, and we're just gonna slowly slide on down. Um, the more practice you have with this, um, the better you'll be able to gauge, you know, the speed you need to take, but I would say, you know, slower is always better. 
Um, again, you're using an iron that's designed for people, so it shouldn't burn the wig. Fingers crossed. Um, so you can go slow and it, sh it shouldn't do any permanent damage. Um, another thing you can do if you notice, like I had this wig in that net at the beginning, and it did leave a little bit of a kink in the bottom of the hair. I'm just kind of running my straightener over a large section of the hair and tightly pulling down, and that's kind of eliminating that little ripple in the hair. And as we do this, I can see that this wig is actually layered. Um, a lot of curled wigs are layered, but you don't notice it when they're curled, you notice it when they're straightened. Or so. Alright, and we're just going to do another section. So I'm going to clip this right there, hopefully it doesn't fling off, and pull out one more piece of hair. I'm just going to twist it like that. This goes in that left as well. This does Alright, and we're going to twist this up and clip it, and flip it over, getting it out of the way. Alright, so again, another section, taking the comb to it, other hair flipping in my face, but we don't care because it's hair and there's, there's, a, there's a joke there somewhere, moving the hair around because we don't care. Alright, and again, starting at the top, and going all the way down. Um, one of the reasons why I straightened, I want to say, 80% of this wig before today, and I'm not going to straighten more of it for you on camera, is because this is a time-consuming process, as you can kind of see. Um, it probably took me um, around an hour to straighten the whole wig maybe a little bit longer than that um, just because I had to section off so many different pieces here and there and I wasn't I kept changing my mind on how much I wanted to straighten um, so it is a lengthy process but it's definitely worth it especially if you want to reset the curls I would recommend straightening it and then redoing the curls okay so get my clip clip this up and back um, another, it, this was popular a while ago, I'm not sure how many people do it now, but another popular way to straighten a wig fast, and by fast I mean it gets straight fast, and then you have to wait a long time, is to take your wig head, put it on a wig stand or a broom, what have you, take it to the bathroom, put it in your tub, get a kettle, fill it with water at about just about boiling, so maybe 200 degrees, and you just pour it over the top of your wig and over all the hair, and it should just immediately straighten, and the weight of the water will pull all that hair straight. Um, again, the only downside to that is you then have to wait for that wig to drip dry <laughs> in your tub. Sometimes takes a day. <laughs> I did that one time, and I will never do it again. I will do this method forever, even though it may take me multiple sessions rather than one time done and then waiting a day to be able to do more styling to the wig. All right, so moving along. We're already about halfway done with this. Is everybody having a good week? It's Wednesday. We've hit the middle of the week. Um, still self-isolating, personally at least. I know that our, my county has gone green where I live, which means that they're opening back up businesses, but I think it's still a good idea to stay safe if you're somebody who's in a risk population or are close with somebody who is or live with somebody who is in a risk population, but um, do wear a mask just to stay safe for them and for yourself. Um, I know that I have asthma and so does my boyfriend. so. Um, I'm pretty conscientious about it just because I don't want those, uh, <laughs> I don't want those coronas getting me. Finished a work project. Yeah. Nice. I also finished a work project, kind of, today. 
I made some job codes for some people to have a career ladder. Woo! Career advancement. Um, it was like a, about a month long project. Finally done. And then I got four more on my plate. <laughs> but yeah, you know, this is a good thing to do while you're just watching TV. Like here, we're just chatting. Um, heat styling wigs is, you know, it's time consuming, but it's usually pretty repetitive. Um, you don't need to, you know, scrutinize it too closely and you can kind of just do it while you're doing something else. So it's kind of like knitting or crocheting or some other crafts. You can just use it as a relaxation. I know I really like doing wig stuff and actually this curl looks so pretty. I like really don't want to straighten it, but and I realized we've been slowly migrating away from the camera. So I'm gonna scoot back around here. But this curl looks so pretty. I really don't want to straighten it, but you know what? That's what we're here to do. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna straighten her up. And up here, we're, we've reached what um, is called the skin top of the wig. So here, if you look in, you no longer see those wefts and you see what looks more like a human scalp. So we don't have any guidelines anymore um, for how to separate out this hair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my comb, I'm gonna step back into the frame, and I'm going to try and draw a nice neat line with the comb through that hair and essentially section off my own area. There we go. And then I'm just gonna kinda get this out of the way again. I guess I should I should clip it away just in case. We don't want it to catch on anything, mess anything else up. I do also realize that by showing you guys the back of the wig, I may have showed you part of what we're gonna do later today. So just don't look too closely at the back of the wig. Just look at what we're working on now, which is straightening. So for anybody who has just joined straightening wig, super easy, you just need a human hair straightener, turn up all the way in a heat proof wig, you start up near the top, get a firm grip, and then you just slowly pull it down the fibers, making sure that they're not tangled as they're going into the straightener, and as you pull down you want to keep some tension so this stays straight, and then when it cools, you want it to cool hanging straight down and that's the final shape that it will take and luckily with such small sections it cools pretty fast so you can touch it almost right away and it's it's not going to burn you or anything all right i think maybe two or three sections more and then we'll be done with straightening what so fast um but yeah, if anybody's wondering why I'm wearing glasses today and I normally wear contacts, it's because I have an eye doctor appointment at the end of the month. And they said basically don't wear glasses for two weeks beforehand. And I was like, this. I mean, don't wear contacts two weeks beforehand. So I'm just playing it safe and I'm not wearing them. I don't typically wear them daily anyway. So yeah, but I'm, uh, saving up to maybe permanently get my vision fixed and then I would never have to wear glasses and I could wear all kinds of fun circle lenses and cosplay lenses and stuff so I'm excited for that if anybody out there has any favorite circle lens brands let me know because I know that some of the ones that used to be popular have a little bit of a uh, um, not necessarily like unsavory stories come out about them so, if you have a favorite circle lens store, let me know. But again, we're starting up at the top here, working our way down. You can probably go faster than this. I am just a little, you know, cautious. I'm a cautious eye. I feel like if I go too fast, it won't quite get to where I want it to be. There we go. All right so close to the end, oh my goodness. I never know like where to put things when I'm working. I need like a rack of hooks just all around me at all times to hang up my various supplies. All right, I've got 
two or three sections left here, and I think that they're separate enough that I won't need to clip them back. So I'm just gonna make my sections now. And I'm just gonna twist this out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna do this section here next, which is close to what we did in the beginning. Again, getting the straightener, making sure that this is detangled. And so I think I'll be good on this one. Maybe the next one I'll need to get the comb for. Going nice and slow. I actually definitely needed the comb on this one because I can see some loops. And so any of those weird little loops in here, if you heat them in that shape, they're gonna come out that shape. There we go, and then just to make sure that these are both kind of in line with each other, I'm just gonna go like this. I need to give them a once over, make sure they're all going the same way. All right, this section next, and then two more, and then I think we're done. So at the bottom, and again, the wig head is turning, but we're just slowly pulling away from it. Slowly, slowly, slowly. I might need to redo part of this segment because it looks a little bit scraggly. I'm just going to give it a quick brush to try and pull these loops out. I can see them. Looks like they're shorter hairs that are just kind of sticking out here and there on this particular piece of hair. And that happens. It's okay. here because it's getting a little weird and fuzzy. And I just want to make sure all these hairs got straight. And it looks like they did. And now we're going to break up this curl into two more sections. And then we should be good to go. I don't think we've had too many people on today. Um, but again, the VOD will be available on Twitch. And then when I finally decide that I'm ready to edit videos, I will put them on YouTube. Um, I'll probably put them on my personal YouTube and then put them on a playlist for the J Fashion On Demand one. Um, but yeah, check it out. If you wanted to learn heat styling, this panel will still be available to you. And I say panel even though it's not at a convention, because that's basically what we're doing, right? We're running a panel on hair stuff. Because why not? section to straighten. We're going to go up towards the top and we're going to pull just straight on down. Nice and tight. And we're going nice and slow and make sure we're getting all the way to the bottom and straighten all that hair. And we're done. We've done it. We've straightened the wig. Woo! Party emojis everywhere. Claps all around. Um, so now you go ahead and turn off your straightener. Before I turn mine off, I'm gonna iron out some of these uh, weird little flips at the bottom that are left over from the hairnet. Um, and you'll notice now that this wig is super straight, it is very easy to comb through. So another benefit of straight wigs is they are just really easy to upkeep. Um, and because this was a curly wig, it was pretty thick. Like there was a lot, there were a lot of fibers here. So this is a nice, thick straight wig too. All right. So for the next segment, we're gonna be curling hair, which is the opposite of what we just did. So, I'm turning off my straightener and I'm finding somewhere for it to cool safely, which for me is underneath this wig stand because it's metal. And for the curling, we have two different types of curls that we can do. We can do like I'll show you here. Um, a looser, uh, more like a body wave, which is what this is here. If I can turn this a little bit more. So this nice looser body wave. It's a lot closer to what this wig was before. Maybe it's a little bit looser than that. This was actually two curls. I don't know why they are choosing to separate, but they are. Um, so these looser body waves or tight, like, 
pink curl spiral, spirals. Ooh, I cannot talk today. Um, so one of these is much faster to do, um, but maybe isn't quite as pretty. Like this, this body wave isn't, you know, it's, it's a nice curl, but it's not necessarily the best. Um, and these tight curls are really nice and really pretty, but they're also very time consuming. So, if anybody is here in the chat other than our mods, and the mod can also vote, um, would you prefer we do the easier body waves first or the time consuming pin curls? I guess these aren't really pin curls, I should say like spirals first. Nice pointy spirals. I'll let the audience vote. And sing the oh, the easier one. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. Truth. Okay, so we're gonna do this like large body wave spiral. So to do this, all you need is, and yes, this is what you need: a old toilet paper tube. <laughs> You're gonna need bobby pins, and you will need. Maybe if I can get it untangled, a heat gun. And if you don't have a heat gun, you can use a hair dryer because they're essentially the same thing, except the hair dryer has some restrictors on it so that it doesn't burn you, and this will definitely melt things. <laughs> so be careful if you have a heat gun. Um, I was very convinced that using a heat gun on a heat proof wig would not screw the wig up. Lo and behold, last night I definitely fried the end of some of the fibers, so don't get too close with it, and we will go over that when I stand up and start doing this style, because I'm gonna, I think I need to stand up for this one. Alright, so bear with me, we're gonna change the camera again really quick, I'm gonna move the wig, and we're gonna start on curling! So, I'm very excited for this. I love, love, love curling wigs. Um, I've curled a bunch of wigs for different um, My Little Pony cosplays, and by My Little Pony I mean only Pinkie Pie because that's the only My Little Pony I have ever cosplayed, <laughs> but I have curled two different wigs for that character, and both I did spirals all over, which took forever, but it was so springy and pretty, you couldn't help but love it. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and start here from the front of the wig. And again, similarly to where when we were straightening, you want to take a very small section of hair, if possible, working from the bottom up. Um, if you're going to curl the whole wig, you want to just pin up the top section of hair and start at the bottom. But we are not going to do that necessarily because that takes a lot of time <laughs> and I don't have the materials with me to hold all that hair up. But I'm going to start with a very small section here, up near the front, I think this will work. And I'm going to clip the rest back, so I'm just going to twist it out of the way and clip it back with the clip, so I step in front of the camera for a second. I'm going to clip all this hair back, and this is the hair that we are going to be working with. So, I'm going to take our used toilet paper roll. Or if you have a super long wig, you can use a paper towel tube. You just will have to kind of wait more in between each curl. And we are going to essentially use this as a giant curler. If you have heat curlers, you are about 50 steps ahead of me because you can just use those. Turn on the heat curlers, get them hot, roll the hair in them, let them sit until they cool, and then take them out and you should be good to go. Um, but we, I don't have heat curlers anymore. I did. I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> so I am showing you how you can be thrifty in your own space. So I'm pulling this hair all the way to the end and a little bit at an angle. Like this, you guys can tell. And while I'm here at the end, I'm going to get some body pins and I'm going to pin this hair to the toilet paper roll. Of course, I place the pins out of my reach. And when I pin them, you want to make sure this flat side, it's hard to see, but the flat side is on the outside um, because that way no hair will slip through. So, like so, just slide it over, 
There we go. And we're going to treat this like it's a curler. So I'm going to stick another one a little farther down because there's layers in this hair. And they are deciding to kind of frizz off on me. They're just kind of, they're just kind of going a little bit everywhere now. I'm just going to slide this bobby pin down, I think, if I can. And we're going to start turning and curling as if it was a big old curler. So we're going up towards the head. I'm going nice and slow and making sure that the hair is laying flat on the toilet paper too. This might be a little hard to see, so I do apologize. And I'm curling this hair so that it goes this way, <laughs> so towards the face. Um, if you want your curls to turn away from your face, you would just wrap the tube going the other direction. So I'm all the way to the top, and I think this is about the point I'm going to stop at. So I'm going to get a bobby pin, and we might need a few here. And I'm going to go in through the top here. I'm going to try to get it over this hair as much as possible, all the way up to where I want it to stop. And it is just going to kind of hang there like that. That's okay. And you will get a little bit of a kink right here where this bobby pin was, but you can easily take your straightener and just hold it over there for a second and iron that out. So, so now we have it on the curler. How do we get it hot? Well, that's where our friend, the heat gun, which turned itself on, comes in. So for this segment, you may hear the heat gun more than me because I'm not wearing a body mic, it's an area mic. So I apologize. I use this heat gun on the low setting. There's only a low and a high. Um, and as I found out last night, you can still fry your wig with the low setting. So we're gonna continue to use low setting as we heat this. Um, so as I heat, I'm gonna blow the direction the hair is going so that I'm not flicking off any loose layers um, on this curler. And I wanna make sure that I'm getting all the hair hot, um, as much of it as possible, because like we said with the straightening, um, the heating, kind of softens up the fibers, but the cooling is what sets it. So if you don't get the fibers hot, they will never set the way that you want them to. So I am, again, like I said, I accidentally ruined some of the hair last night, just a little bit afraid. So I'm trying to be cautious as to where and what distance I'm holding this from the hairs that I'm working on. Because I really don't want to ruin them. This was, um, you know, not a very cheap wig, so I want to make sure that it's still in good condition after this process. So I'm just heating all those hairs until they're hot, and I'm going to turn the heat gun off, and we're just going to wait. So a good thing about this toilet paper roll is that it's hollow on the inside, and so what that means compared to having um, like a metal hot curler or a ceramic hot curler is it's going to cool faster from the inside out as well. So we're just going to wait for a minute and we're going to set up a second curl and then we will take both of them out and see what they look like. I'm still kind of experimenting as to the best way to do these bigger curls, um, but the theory should be the same as doing the spirals, so that's kind of where I'm going with this. <laughs> You'll see when we do this fire holes what I mean. All right, so I'm gonna pick a second section of hair. Um, also kind of towards the top. Oh, I, wigs are hot. Oh, I'm glad that you think that this is helpful. Aww. So yeah, wigs are, they can get hot, especially in the summer. It's supposed to be 90 this weekend where I, I live, I think. Um, I know I stepped outside this morning and it was humid. I'll tell you what, it was unbearably humid. I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> I just came right back inside. Um, but I did have a package and in the package I was very excited it was a vacuum that I had ordered. So you know you're an adult when you're excited for things like a vacuum. <laughs> All right, so again, we are treating this toilet paper roll like it's a curler. And we're gonna get this hair nice and flat, go all the way to the base, 
and then we're going to pin it up as we roll it. I'm going to grab the bobby pin to get us started here. And this is very difficult for me for some reason. Get it, get it on there. Get that here nice and tight. I'm going to wrap this piece around here too and stick another one and get both of these at once if I can. The layered hair, while it looks pretty, is extremely hard to curl because all of those little layered pieces just like to spring up and stay straight. And I can tell you I'm not a fan even though I like layers gonna look better in the end. So alright, I don't want these bobby pins to leave bumps, so I'm trying to slide the hair under them as I go up. And with my first bobby pin short, and I didn't do that this time around, so kind of reaping my own just desserts here. So now at the top, I'm going to get a bobby pin right at the top and get as much of that hair under it as I can so that it is nice and tight. So I'm going to slide some of it up under there, and I'm even going to put a second one just to make sure that we don't lose any of this hair in the curl. Alright, so this is going to be our second one, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get the heat gun, take it to the hair, keeping our distance and blowing the same direction that the hair is wrapped so that we don't make any more flyaways than we already have. And you can go slow if you want. I like to do the, the back and forth kind of circle motion just because I, I don't like keeping the gun in one section because um, I don't want to accidentally burn anything. Um, I've got some hair here that's being a little unruly, so I'm going to try to heat it in this direction. It does look like it's, it's doing a little bit of a weird thing, so I'm going to back off. Okay. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm hitting the back of the curl as well as the front, which we already did. So one of the things that makes this a little bit harder than the spirals is, you know, you're not really guaranteeing that all of this hair is going to get heated. Um, when you're using a curling iron, which is how I do my spirals, you know that that curling iron is hot and you're definitely getting all the hair to the temperature it needs to be in. It's definitely going to be curled. Let's see if I can get this one more time, just because I'm a little bit nervous going to be too loose here. Some of the hair has just blown right off the toilet paper too, but that's, that's okay. Alright, so curl number two is done. We're going to set the heat gun down on the ground. I'm not going to trip on the extension cord. Very tempting though. And our first curl is definitely cool now. Although it was touching our first one, so it might not be ready to come out quite yet. But we're gonna go ahead and try. So what I like to do is take out all the bobby pins first. I think I might have one more. Nope. And then just kind of let the hair do what it feels is right. Um, sliding it off gently as we can. And so now we got this nice big like body wave loose curl. Yay, we did it! So with a lot of these, we will be kind of in the style that the wig was originally. I would need something a little bit smaller diameter than this, so maybe like a fatter curling iron to get exactly the same curl as this wig used to have. Um, but we're going to take out this too. Again, because this inside of this is hollow and I took very thin sections of hair, um, this did cool pretty quickly. So that's nice. And we can show you two curls at once. Alright, so again, I'm just kind of shaking this hair loosely off of the toilet paper roll because I don't want to pull on it because if I pull on it, I could risk, you know, pulling out that curl. And I don't really want to do that. Okay, 
So I, we, we got a little bit of frizziness going on here, so I'm just gonna kind of work this with my hands a little bit. I'm gonna pull out the, the comb, just to kind of get through there. There we go. Beautiful, oh my gosh, this one turned out so pretty. Can you guys see this? It's like a perfect little beach wave. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll pull her up like this to my height. So we have like this, the second one turned out to be absolutely perfect. So this is my new go-to, okay, <laughs> I've decided. Um, <laughs> how do we get toilet paper rolls if there's a shortage? <laughs> um, but yeah, now this is my new favorite way to do body waves. I'm doing this forever. Um, I need to redo my, my Valentine wig. The girls have since fallen um, rip and I need to redo that. But, uh, but yeah, so toilet paper roll is um, easy way to curl wigs. Now you know, now I know. Um, all right, so we have, I think we have 15 minutes to eight. <laughs> Yeah, it turned out so well. I'm so excited. Could you imagine like a whole wig that's all like these nice loose body curls? Oh my God. Oh, it'd be so pretty. All right, so now um, I do want to wrap up closer to eight today. Keep this at about an hour. I know I've been going an hour and a half lately, um, but I do want to show you guys one more way to curl hair and that is the spiral. So that's going to end up something like this. You're going to have these nice springy little curls, um, which are good for some of the older school Lolita looks because that was pretty popular back then. Um, it's to have like a straight bang and then curly hair in the back. It's also very popular in the world I used to come from, the Irish dance world where we were wearing wigs before we were 10 and they were all curly <laughs> and looked terrible. <laughs> I should one day find some of the pictures of me and Irish dance wigs and show them here just uh, just for some uh, reference of the trauma I put myself through as a child doing a sport I liked. Um, anyway, alright, so again, kind of like we did with the toilet paper roll strategy, we want a relatively thin piece of hair. So I'm going to thin this out best I can. I think this feels like a good section. Um, now, this may, I think that I don't need to say this, but the size curling iron you use is gonna determine the size of the curl. So if you want ones that are super, super skinny, um, use a thinner curling iron. But this is like a medium large one. Um, this I think was my mother's. It's ancient <laughs> and <laughs> It's got on off and the dial is like on the side. Um, I don't think it has any kind of date on it, but made in China. <laughs> anyway, so you're gonna need a curling iron and this technique is very, very effective. It works really well, um, but it takes forever and you'll see why when we get there. So, I should have done this first and then had it cool while we did the other one, I'm now realizing. Um, so my curling iron is heating up and if you are very impatient, you can even get your hair on the curling iron while it's heating up um, because there's not gonna be any harm in that. Um, you're just waiting for it to heat. Okay, let me get that out of the way. Going all the way to the bottom of the hair if we can um, and then I like to, whoops. Don't do that. That was a mistake. We don't we don't want that. <laughs> don't let go of your hair. <laughs> that kind of defeats the purpose. If there's no hair in the curling iron, how are you gonna curl it? I just had a little bit of a an end here. I was trying to like sneakily tuck under and it it wasn't really going as planned, so I tried to salvage it. <laughs> All right, so um, I can feel my curling iron heating up. It's still cool enough that I can touch it. Um, so we are gonna have to wait a little bit of time. Um, similar to the straightening iron. I'm sure most people don't call them straightening irons and I'm not sure why I'm calling it a straightening iron now. Um, <laughs> but um, what was I gonna say? Um, it's made for human hair. So the highest temp that it can go um, 
is it gonna hurt the wig? It's it's just it's not it's not gonna get hot enough to ruin a synthetic wig, especially the one from Arda. I think they are heat proof up to like something crazy like 450 degrees Fahrenheit, like way hotter than you could get many things in your house. Like you'd have to stick it in the oven and then put the oven on self clean to get it hot enough to hurt the wig. Or, you know, use that heat gun and just put it right on the wig. Don't do that. All right, so our curling iron's heating up and now it is hot. So once it's hot, we're gonna turn it off. Yes, that's right. We are turning the curling iron off and we are not moving. And what's gonna happen is we are going to wait for the curl to cool on the iron. How many wigs have I curled using this method? Two. Would I do it again? Yes. Did I binge watch all of Sailor Moon and all of Game of Thrones seasons one through three and only got through one wig? Yes. So what I tended to do was I would curl up a curl, turn off the curling iron, um, get it to the height of my desk and rest the curling iron on the desk. I knew it was off or I would unplug it and I would just wait for it to cool and I would just watch TV and then when I knew it was cool, take it off, switch another curl, set it up. Once it's hot, turn it off, start another episode. <laughs> so this is extremely time consuming, but it is so, 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 so worth it. And you will see it once we take this curl off of here. I think that they're so pretty. Um, although we may have some bias in the chat. I'm just jabbing you. Um, but uh, yeah, I would love to recurl this wig to be all like this or just to keep it straight. I don't have any straight wigs. I think all my wigs are nice and flowy like this one. Which, by the way, this is the wig that we did the tutorial for last week. You can see a little bit of that corset lacing in there. I know this little veil covers it. Um, but if you want to know how to do that, you can check out last week's Vaughn, which one day I will get up on YouTube when I stop getting my head out of the frame. Um, <laughs> so, again, this is still hot. I'm kind of trying to push these flyaways in the direction of the curling iron. Um, something you will need to come to grips with if you...